I know I'm super late to the party on this particular subject, and it may not be a foregone conclusion, but even if this doesn't actually happen, just the mere fact that Democrats are considering it, it shows you how little they value the left. And, you know, for those of you who haven't heard, we'll take a look at this headline. Kasich to speak at Democratic convention on behalf of Joe Biden. Now, a lot of you may think, what's the big deal there? I mean, sure, he's a Republican, but doesn't a Republican speaking at the Democratic Party's national convention really just demonstrate how bad Donald Trump is? Um, no, not necessarily. Um, it really says a lot about the Democratic Party and their values, you know, a platitude that they like to say uh, they put front and center, right? Because if you are willing to align with someone like John Kasich, that says a lot about you. And in particular, that really undercuts the one thing that makes the Democratic Party appealing, because why do we have a reason to vote for Democrats at all? I mean, it's because they're basically woke Republicans, right? They may be economically conservative and align with Republicans on the military and whatnot, but at least when it comes to social justice issues, they're relatively good. You know, they may be a lot of talk, it may be just rhetoric, but at least they aren't openly bigoted or explicitly bigoted as the Republican Party is. They support women, women's rights, women's reproductive rights, uh, LGBTQ causes and whatnot. But John Kasich, Everything he stood for during his tenure as governor of Ohio flies in the face of what they claim they represent. I mean, when it comes to abortion, he signed one of the most restrictive abortion bills into law in the country. And I'm assuming he did this under the guise of it being some sort of compromise because he ended up vetoing the really draconian heartbeat bill. But his bill was still pretty bad. It subjected physicians, abortion doctors, to felonies if they violated his state's stringent standards with regard to abortion. It also made no exceptions for rape or incest. And if that were the only thing with regard to social issues or cultural issues regarding John Kasich, I would say, okay, he's just really bad on this one issue, but he's bad on other issues as well. You know, when it comes to LGBTQ rights, he is terrible when it comes to this. But don't take it from me. Take it from the Democratic Party, who in 2016 tweeted this during a Republican primary debate. Ohio had a constitutional ban on gay marriage, and John Kasich fought to keep it there. Now, let's just pause there for a moment. The fact that he fought to uh, keep their state's constitutional ban on gay marriage on the books, that is unforgivable. But I can't even say it's unforgivable because he hasn't even asked for forgiveness. I don't even know if he's evolved. He may still hold these same bigoted views where he believes that gay people should be second class citizens. This is who the Democrats want to speak. On top of that, back in 2012, after he endorsed Mitt Romney, they criticized him on Twitter for being a union buster, and rightfully so. But as this reply points out, damn, I hope you guys are never involved with him, and I think that'd be a really bad look. Now, that was obviously a reply from 2020 to kind of highlight uh, their hypocrisy, because now they're contemplating getting in bed with him. Um, and he's not the only Republican who I'm worried that the Democratic Party will get in bed with. I mean, we see these Lincoln Project grifters take prominence now, individuals like Rick Wilson, the architects of Bush's Iraq war. And I mean, if they help Biden win, then I, I think as Emma Viglin pointed out on Twitter really astutely, this could be a Trojan horse to get more Republicans involved in the Democratic Party, so where this becomes like a bush light party overall and you know by associating with someone like john Kasich, you're sending a message to women to lgbtq people to workers that you don't actually value them and take them as seriously as you claim to and if you don't actually have that credibility if people don't believe that you're serious about social justice issues and we have reasons to believe that you're not then what's going to happen you lose all of your repeal the one catch that you have the one reason why the left votes for you that goes away. That justification goes completely out the door because if you're going to be economically conservative and disregard social justice issues, then you're useless at that point. You're just Republicans. You're just moderate Republicans, and that's unacceptable. But, you know, it gets even more outrageous and infuriating when you consider how selective the Democratic Party is 
in determining who they should or shouldn't work with. Because as Socialist MMA points out on Twitter, the same Democratic Party that had a complete meltdown regarding Joe Rogan endorsing Bernie is allowing John Kasich, an extreme homophobe, to speak at their convention. Yeah, isn't it funny how that works? Now, to make matters worse, in 2016, there was another politician from Ohio that was scheduled to speak at the DNC convention. That individual was Nina Turner. But they removed her inexplicably from the convention program. Let me repeat that to you. The top surrogate for Bernie Sanders in 2016, who came in second place and almost won, was barred from speaking at the DNC convention. So to the Democratic Party, Nina Turner isn't welcome to speak at our conventions, but John Kasich, he is welcome. I mean, this is infuriating and it's a slap in the face to the left. I mean, they're currently trying to court us, are they not? They're trying to win us over. What else was the point of the uh, unity task forces with Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders? If you're serious about wanting to win over the left and young people, you can't do things like this. You can't associate yourself uh, uh, with people, your party. You can't associate them with individuals like this who are harmful, who are as extreme as Donald Trump, but the difference between John Kasich and Donald Trump is that John Kasich doesn't put out mean tweets. So as long as you're polite, you can be a bigot and the Democratic Party will want to work with you if they think there's going to be a political gain in that. To, you know, capitalize on anti-Trump Republicanism and this weird, like, three-person phenomenon because anti-Trump Republicans is not a very big thing. But I mean, like, for them to do this, it's just, it's unacceptable. So um, if he is going to speak, then there should be a lot of pushback. I can't even say that there should be protests because I don't think that this DNC convention is going to take place in person because of COVID-19. So I'm not sure. They made us do it and uh, that's that. We have no say. They've already kind of showed us that they, they don't necessarily care about what the left has to say. They don't really value our input. Otherwise, they would actually endorse policies like Medicare for All. Nonetheless, I mean, this shouldn't take place. And if they actually are serious about winning over the left, don't do this. We don't need to have John Kasich speak because he's a moderate Republican. I mean, come on. This is not something that you should be doing at all. If you ever want to win back the trust from young people that you lost, if you ever want to actually have the left support you again, because I mean, there's already um, not very much enthusiasm for Joe Biden. And if he wins, it will be because people hate Donald Trump that much. But I mean, don't make matters worse. Don't spit in our faces, right? This is just not okay.